Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you all about what my reason was for getting suspended on Twitch and also what my plans are going forward. I'm going to try and structure this video into two parts where the first part is going to be me talking about the Twitch suspension, second part is going to be talking about myself. And the first thing I want to start off with is something that um, I know it might sound a little bit insincere because of how ridiculous this is, but I really mean it and if you listen to the whole video, I hope you can see why. Everybody who's come and spoken out and talked to me and said stuff about me, uh, you know, aside from the, oh, you should or something like that, uh, I want to say that I really appreciate you. And I think this has been something that's a long time coming. And I actually think that this is something that not only I deserved, but it's also something that I needed. And I want to talk about what the reason for that is, but I want to start off and just make sure that that's actually very clear. Uh, so a couple of days ago, I made some comments about Palestine and also about Hamas and, you know, some just general, uh, you know, basically opinions that were trivializing the genocide that's happening there. And I, I don't really want to like mince words or like try to like, oh, I wasn't justifying or, you know, promoting it. Uh, I, I said something about it that was disgusting. I said that I didn't care about innocent people getting killed by another force, by anything. And I think that that's a horrible disgusting, mean-spirited thing to say. Mm. And uh, Oh, I really appreciate the word mean-spirited. I Like, I really I really appreciate that sentiment. I, I don't necessarily think that it was really racist, really, but when I'm using language like Palestinians or like the people there, rather than what my real language was, uh, I've always been very outspoken and very against religious extremism. And I still am. I think that any religion and any way of thinking that's going to cause you to put other people in like kind of positions below you as like, you know, like uh, gay people, women, uh, people with disabilities, anything like that. Uh, I think that that's a really bad position to have. And I really don't like that. And I think that my problem and my fault here was that I was making a criticism of religious extremism and I made no effort. And I, I feel like almost I've rewatched the clip, right, or a number of the clips, and it's like I've almost made an effort not to draw a distinction between the two things. I think that a lot of us here can easily say that we're against religious extremism, and I am. But whenever I categorize everybody in the area as this, like, group, uh, then I'm the asshole. And I was the asshole. I had a lot of you guys tell me that. And it's taken me, this is what's so crazy about it, is that. Major props, good clarification, and I think he's right. I think we often fall into this trap, myself included, where we just want to shortcut our language because we think our audience understands us or we forget new people will see us or we forget this isn't like a bubble or a vacuum in a sense, like people can hop into this bubble and see us. So I think this is like every, this is something I have to even remember as a content creator that when I take shortcuts in language, it's going to get confusing and it might get boring for my core audience to have to hear me explain everything in detail every time. And it does. I get complaints from people who are like, we know, Brittany, you don't have to explain it every time, but you're not the one who's going to get canceled. Okay. So I get it, but it, it is exhausting, but I think it's important to remember that, you know, when we talk, we could be seen by people who don't know the shortcut language. I think this has been going on now for like two years. I think that I've been slowly devolving into the most mean-spirited, uh, <gasps> oh. just uh, like, like, I don't really even know what the word is for it. Mm. Uh, just like the most mean-spirited, rude, like nasty, uh, like just callous, uh, psychopathic version of myself. Oh. I, I think that I've been devolving into this. Oh, this is a very big moment for streamers everywhere because it really does bring out the worst in us for sure because that this is this is big. This is big. And a lot of my friends have told me this. My dad has told me this. He said you've got to chill out. You've got to calm down. I've been like, "Oh, he this old man doesn't know what he's talking about." And I finally had some level of accountability for that. And thank God. I wow. I look back at some of the things that I've said and done over the past 2 years. And I don't think that I've been wrong about everything, obviously, right? But there have been ways that I've communicated and ways that I've acted that are indefensible. And Ooh. I think it's, looking back on it, it's just disgusting. And it's something that when you get lost in the sauce and you get fixated around, like, listening and reading feedback and, you know, just getting hyper fixated, this is like your entire life, you lose a perspective on reality and you lose a perspective on the world. And I think that that perspective was brought into perspective yesterday and the day before um, when I, I was making comments like this. And uh, I, I feel I, I feel so stupid. I, I, it's crazy. So I, I'm getting all these people making negative comments toward me. Everybody is telling me like, oh, I hate you, everything like this. Do you know who reached out to me? And uh, they uh, wanted to talk and have a conversation and see if I was okay. It's people that were Islamic and people that were fucking family in Palestine. And I, how humiliating is that? 
How absolutely humiliating is that? And these were the people I was trying to say were, were, were bad. And I... Girl, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I am crying. Oh my god. I just, I, I feel like such a fucking stupid asshole. I really do. Um, I've always been a, uh, you know, I, I guess like I've always been kind of like an atheist. And um, uh, even as, as a young kid, I was raised Roman Catholic and I was always very defiant towards it. And um, I've always had a negative opinion of religion, and I've also had a negative opinion of religious cultures. And I, I think that really, I think that opinion is definitely shaped by the media that I've created, and the media I've created for myself, and then also just the media that exists, the media that I've chose to seek out as well. And I think that that media has allowed me to have certain uh, predispositions and certain biases that... Um, the, the truth is that don't have any sort of relation to what my own real life has been experienced or my own real life experience has been, excuse me. And so I, I've been spending a lot of time talking to those people and I've seen people like fans of mine, like I had viewers messaging me on discord, like, you know, why, why are you saying this? Like, do you want to talk? Do you want to like, you know, I'm, I'm willing to talk to you and like, you know, like, let, let's try to work this out. Right. We love you. And I scrolled up on their messages. And these are people that messaged me in like 2016, 2017, 2018, like, I love your content, I love your stream, I love you, right? And, and now they get to hear this from me, and I just feel like such a stupid, belligerent fucking asshole. Ugh. I really do, and I'm sorry. Wow. I, I really am. I, I think- Wow, I, I don't even need to say much to this. It's such, it's beautiful, but I think Trevi and chat said it perfectly. Asmin single-handedly making the best apology video to ever hit YouTube. Holy fuck, I'm crying, bro. I feel like this is authentic. Like, not just because it hit me, but like, this is so good. I think that it's extremely fair to criticize. Uh, and by the way, notice that the part that made me cry was the fact that Palestinians reached out to him. Because that's how good humanity is. You know, as, as rough as humanity is, that's how good it is. That's what made me cry was the idea that the people he was persecuting in any capacity were the ones to be compassionate. Right? Because that, that was a big part of the conversation we were having yesterday. Just because people are homophobic doesn't mean I want them to be in pain. Just because people hurt you doesn't mean wishing them, wishing bad on them is the answer, right? So very beautiful. Religious extremism. And I think that it's extremely unfair to categorize everybody in part of that group as religious extremists. I think it is, and I'm, I'm really sorry for that. Uh, I've just been a dick. And I, it, it's weird because I, yesterday I woke up and I didn't know if I was gonna get suspended or not. And I planned on streaming and everything. And uh, I actually got a text message from one of my mods. They said, oh, I heard about the suspension, I'm sorry. And I was like, I remember I was like driving and like, you know, you'd think that like your heart rate would go up, but if anything, I felt more relaxed. I felt like finally I have a moment to just take a step back and breathe mm. and think for myself and just stop, just like get out, get out of my own head. And I spent a long time like just writing basically a list of all of these things that like I, I think that I should be doing with my life. And this is going to be kind of the second part, by the way, of the video. Uh, comments that I made uh, were pretty much about religious extremism. I think it's bad, uh, but I've categorized a lot of people in that way that was unfair. It's wrong for me to have done that. Uh, I said something that was bad. I should not have said that. I should have chosen my words more carefully. I didn't do that. I doubled down on it. I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. Mm, good. That's pretty much I was a f***ing asshole. I'm a mm -hmm. piece of shit. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to say. And so, actually, I do know what else to say. I, I don't like making apologies because I think words don't matter. Um, but I do think changed actions and changed behaviors do. And so you can take my apology as hopefully better content. And if you're not seeing that, I want you to hold me accountable. Hopefully this time I won't be stupid enough to ignore it. Mm. Mouth is pretty dry. Anyway, so the second part about this is that I want to talk a little bit about like my life, my personal life, etc. And kind of some of the points that I think that I've, I've kind of gone through to get here. Uh, so the main thing is that for the past, like, I would say like 10 years or so, uh, if you look at my life like this, I would have said 10 years ago or maybe eight years ago, streaming was like this, right? YouTube was like this. And now I would say that my life and streaming are basically the exact same size. And what I mean by that is that streaming is my entire life. Doing this is my entire existence. And I think that the process of that has been extremely unhealthy for me and i think mm. that what it's done is that it's allowed me to become such a one-dimensional person that i'm not even a person anymore it's like i'm in dark souls i'm going hollow or something and i think about like all the you know like i i made a list of all of the things that i'm not doing in my life that i should be doing and i was writing it down and i'm like you know like i'm just going and going going i'm like oh my god i think it'd be shorter if i transcribed the bible like this <laughs> is insane like i'm like you know can i say this is the irony of success all these streamers that are so successful also don't have lives. That's why a work-life balance is so hard because the success comes usually at the expense 
of everything else. And that's why it's very hard. And that's, it is, it's not easy to make this decision. We all have this. Everyone's going to have the struggle in their life because money is going to be waved in front of you. Success, all of this stuff is going to be waved in front of you. And you have to decide what am I going to do and how am I going to create that balance? Like my dad always took off Sundays no matter what and was home with the family. You know, like that was one way that they did it because like they're religious and they don't work on Sundays, right? Or, you know, in my case, you guys know I end stream anytime my spoons are out. I just go, okay, that's it. I'm not going to push it. Like I'll push it sometimes. Like yesterday we pushed it by an hour, not a big deal. And look at me always changing to make sure my stream time doesn't interact with my, like doesn't make my life worse. I always want to make sure my job isn't making my life worse. It's making my life better. I want to make sure that me avoiding work isn't making my life worse. It's making my life better. Like I want to make sure I'm not avoiding. I'm creating balance is what I'm trying to say. So this is the irony of these streamers who, who stream 10 hours a day, including Hassan, who when he went viral a few months back, you know, said like, it really messes with your social time, right? And like that, that is true. Like after you've been streaming all day, the last thing you want to do is hang out with your friends. And I know that hurts people's feelings because they're like, you were just at home all day, but this is socializing. You're talking to a lot of people with personalities. You're using your emotional labor to do a lot of work. And then after you don't want to socialize, like that's going to impact your life eventually. So you have to pick and choose when to balance things out. So I'm so proud of Asmin for being aware of that because the last person I thought who would do this would be Asmin as of late, right? Like I didn't think he would come to this conclusion yet, even though I knew he was working on himself because Asmin had been telling his audience he's been stressed. He went to the hospital. He almost had like basically a heart attack, but not a heart attack. Okay. I don't want to like exaggerate it, but he was sick. He was stressed and he told his audience, uh, I am stressed, but it's not streaming. I never want streaming to be the reason I'm stressed, but streaming can be the reason you become one dimensional because it is a bubble guys. We live in a bubble. A lot of you and I, we share the same videos on the discord because we're on the same algorithm. YouTube gives us the same videos to watch you and I give out each other opportunities to find new creators, but we also have a huge overlap because we're drawn to one another because we're in similar, like we have similar vibes, right? Like monkey D Trevi in the, the chat says right now, and thank you for being a member, right? Like we have members here. We have people in the community. We have people that are, you guys are funding the content, which means it's like something you're interested in to some extent. It tells us something about ourselves. So you said, Britt, do you focus on building a core audience? Feels like these streamers who are doing it 10 hours a day feel like they have to, or they lose their virality. I think it's a combination of things. I focus on making content that I think is good and worth people's time. Okay. Like I, pre think about the videos for stream. I think about what mood I'm going into. I think about like the podcasts, especially now that they're back. I think about like, who is it for? Why am I asking someone to spend an hour of their time with me? I'm thinking about paying my bills, of course, but I'm always thinking about attracting the right kind of audience. But I always assume my audience will grow and change over time. I think of myself more like the professor who keeps teaching history 101. So the class changes, but the subject's the same. Like, I feel like I know my niche. And people will outgrow me, but new people will always be looking for these answers. Like new people will always come in and say like, how do I have a relationship with myself? And then I tell them how to be a whole human being, which is just like a tool thing. But you know, I don't think about keeping an audience for 20 years. I think about keeping the right people in the community that can benefit from the content. I just want them to benefit from the content because that's what I, that's why I watch people because I benefit from the content, right? I feel good after watching it or I feel like I learned something. Asmin's content usually makes me feel like chill. Like I'm hanging out with a buddy and I'm just, I want his opinions on things. That's why I watch Asmin. And that's why I watch a lot of commentary YouTubers. I'm like, oh, I wonder what they think about something. And Asmin has to be honest that it's not the stream that's ruining his life, but it is the stream that's keeping him limited. And I think this is a great realization for him to have and a good message for other streamers to also internalize. Like, whenever I have everything written down line for line, it's like, oh my god, I'm ruining my life. I've been existing, and I want to, at a certain point, actually try to live my life. And I don't think that I've been doing that. And so, what am I going to do? How am I going to do that differently? And what does that mean for, for my stream, etc.? Mm -hmm. I think that I'm going to cut down a little bit on streaming quite as much. And I think I'm also going to cut down... This is going to sound like... I, I, I hope I can say this in the right way. I feel like the main times that I laugh on my stream nowadays are when I'm laughing at other people. And I look back on videos that I did from 2020, 2016, and 17, and yeah, I've always been an asshole. True. Okay, first of all, this is great because I, I think it's like what you laugh at, what you take pleasure in. And true, uh, I think your lessons evolve, whether that's the plan or not. 
they will, and I will grow. And my audience might grow with me as well. Like you don't have to outgrow my content. You might just grow with me. That's usually what happens with the hardcore audience members, the people who have been here there the whole time. It's because they've been growing with me, which is very exciting. Yes, Bryson, I suspect I'll grow along with you. Yeah, me too. Like that's, that's the core audience. The core audience are the people who grow with me. Then there's the audience that will grow, you know, past me because they need a different journey. And then there's the audience that will always check in every like five years to see what I'm up to. But the core audience will be those who grow with me and they'll be exciting. We'll learn together. You know, it will be cool. It will be great. But holy shit, I've been way more of an asshole. It is, it's insane. And it's a night and day difference. And I've had, again, everybody in the world telling me this, including my own dad. And I wow. just ignored them. And mm. finally, it's like, you know what? <laughs> maybe I'm an asshole. Maybe, maybe this is too far. Maybe I need a, a, a course correction. Nice. Which is why I think that like getting suspended in this, uh, I hope that it's one of the best things that's ever happened to me. I think it and will I be. And I don't know whether that's going to be true, but I'm... It is if he utilizes it. It is if he utilizes it. The universe will send you struggle. The universe will give you opportunities to grow. This is an opportunity. This is exciting. We're going to try to do things differently and make sure to live up to that reality. And so uh, what are those things that I'm going to be doing differently? Um, the first thing is that I think I'm going to try. I've been very much trying to like maintain a consistent schedule with my stream, and I will continue to do that. Uh, I want to get up and go to bed at relatively the same time. I want to nice. live a normal life. And also, I want to spend maybe a little bit less time streaming, and I want to spend more time creating my own videos and doing my own things and cool. spending time on things that I really enjoy and basically just like expanding my existence as a person. Oh. I think that ever since I started like OTK and I got involved with that and then we had like other Starforge and like Mad Mushroom and, and Mythic and everything like I honestly it's been too much for me to handle. Uh, it's been, been completely too much for me to handle and it, I, I've I've been losing my mind dealing with it and I try to hide it the best I can because, you know, I, I try to do the best, right? I try to do my best. I, I, you know, it doesn't matter how hard it gets. You just keep going. You just keep going. It doesn't matter. And eventually it does matter. And I think that I've negatively affected a lot of them. And I also Ugh. don't want to talk about that just in the context of just like this recent controversy. Uh, I want to talk about this in the context of the last two years. I think that I haven't really been able to fulfill my responsibilities as uh, a leader in a lot of cases to them. Oh, this is so effing good. Chat says, is he saying that this ban of streaming will give him more time to make original content? No, he's saying this ban for streaming will help him give, give him the time to prioritize his life. Like just this one day made him realize like, oh my gosh, like I need to read. I think he's using this week, not literally. I don't think we should take it literally, but I think he's using this opportunity to recontextualize his priorities. So when the ban is over, he can think about how he wants to return to the public. This is a very big deal. And yes, who said it? Ingrid, I'm glad he's aware of this. It seems pretty rare in the guy bubbles. Usually you see them double down. This is fabulous. This is just the most fat. I don't want to like talk it up too much, but it is so rare to see. You're like, oh my God, <laughs> this is amazing. And this is going out to his audience who honestly could use a little bit of self-reflection. So this is beautiful. And could you imagine any other guy streamers? Think about all the toxic boy streamers. Could you imagine if they did something like this? Hell would freeze over. It's so beautiful to see it come from Asmin. Like it's really cool. It's really cool. And I think that I've let a lot of people down. Uh, and there have been things that I've done that are positive as well. But I think that one thing this thing has taught me, this whole situation has taught me, it's made me realize, has taught me to realize, is that um, I need to get myself in check. I need to get my mind under control. I need to, like, just get my life. <laughs> I need to fix my life. Like, it, it's it's insane. Like, I, I think about it and it's just, it's in shambles. Uh, everything about my life is basically fucked. And I'm gonna take a step back from all of that. I'm gonna step away from my leadership position and OTK and Starforge and everything. I, I wanna, and, and they're fine with that. They respect that and I, I wanna do this. And I wanna do this not only for them, but mainly for myself, so I can be a better version of myself mm. for everyone. Mm. And I wanna apologize to all you guys, my viewers, that I've, I don't think I've lived up to that. I think that I can be a lot better than what I am right now. And I don't even think that I've been putting in half the effort that I should be in the way that I should be, and I'm sorry. And so my plan is to, when I get unbound, uh, I'll keep streaming regularly, right? Um, and I, I want to focus more on trying to do things that are fun, trying to laugh more with people rather than laugh at people. I'll still laugh at people every once in a while, okay? Like let's of not <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Um, but again, 
it's about a focus and it's about a um it's about a tone i listen to my tone in the clip and i just sound like such a piece of shit really at the end of the day i sound like a piece of shit i sound like a terrible person and it's just so mean-spirited and, and callous mm. and just mean and i don't want to be that person anymore and uh i've I spent a long time growing up uh, the time I did I was an r slash atheism enjoyer I have a very uh, negative opinion of a lot of religions uh, I've had the experience firsthand of the negative effects of Christianity and uh, you know the way that I, I view that and I've always read a lot of very bad things about Islam uh, and I've made a lot of criticisms of it I've talked to a lot of people about it I've heard a lot about it and I, I've I've been like watching things about it and I, I've been like hearing people telling me this is the way it is but I've never seen it. Oh, and oh, 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 that was, I keep hearing people tell me about it. I keep hearing all the bad stuff, but I've not actually seen it. That, oof. I actually think that at, after all this, I think towards the end of next year, I think I'd like to visit the Middle East and see it for myself. Uh, I want to see it for a historical perspective, right? I would love to go to Istanbul in Turkey. Mm. Um, there's no, uh, no alternative. Oh my God, Hassan and Asmin go to Turkey. Now that would be a vlog. Your motive there at all. Um, but it's not just that. I'd, I'd love to put, visit places like Saudi Arabia, Dubai, any of the other places. I mean, mm. the truth is that, and this is the worst thing about what I said, um, some of the places that I would want to visit, I might not be able to because of the way that they're like, just the internal strife, the actual mm -hmm. literal wars that are going mm -hmm. on, people being literally killed. Uh, there and, and I might not be able to do that, but I, I, I want to do it and I want to see it for myself Because I I don't like believing what people tell me and I think that when I do I end up being a fool Oof. And I want to see it. I mm. want to see it for myself and I want to experience it and I want to live my life and oh. I, I'm going to try to like for the record if you guys are not Asmin fans So Asmin streams on Twitch, but he streams on a Twitch channel that isn't monetized. So for like many long time he has had 30,000 people watching him on stream and making zero dollars from it because he thinks he makes enough money as it is. He's like, I make enough money. I don't, you know, he doesn't care. He like runs a company. He He's a millionaire. So don't get me wrong. He's a multimillionaire, right? Like we don't have to, he's not poor, but he just never invested in his life in that way. He's basically in the same, he is in the same house he grew up in when his mother was, because his mother and him, they come from a poverty, poverty, like low income background. And so he struggled his whole life. He wasn't making any money on his stream because he's like, he doesn't need to, but he does make money from AdSense. So just FYI, like he does make money from AdSense on YouTube, just not on Twitch where he streams all day. He doesn't make any, he doesn't have, he's, he streams on his second channel there. Um, so uh, there's things about Asmin that I always thought were like really good, but obviously he always struggles. His house is a mess. He's dealing with like, um, his relationship to cleanliness and sort of taking care of himself. So I'm really proud of him for investing in himself because there's one thing to be frugal and there's another thing to be neglectful. And I always feel like Asmin has neglected himself and now he's finally investing. And I just, I love that. Like, I love that. I don't know, like clean up part of my house. I'm going to try to nice. do this and, and I'm not going to hire a cleaner. As I said, I was raised Roman Catholic. <laughs> I view this as a penance. Mm. And I one of the reasons he hasn't hired a cleaner to come clean his house is because he's embarrassed they'll get sick he's deeply worried that they will get sick if they clean his house because it's so dirty and that's where a, a good company can come in and clean it and people can care for people in their community but that is a lot that's actually a very common fear and a lot of like hoarding bubbles where they're like terrified and embarrassed of how dirty they are they don't want to have people help clean and that's why the community comes in and helps them because we understand but we can help like people can help you so i can see where he's going there i hope that he does have people who can care and help for him or hire like made in sudden chat you could hire a hazmat cleaning team that's actually what emaru and tectone suggested to him on the podcast and I think that'd be really nice. I don't want him to feel like he has to do it alone. Good thing is that he's got really good friends around him. He's got a good community. People will be there for him. And that's all that matters. But this is like, this is a very big deal for those of us who have been watching Asmin. And remember, just a couple years back, I was like, I don't like Asmin. I don't watch him. And then my partner was like, you should watch his videos. I feel like you'd get along with him as a person. Like not, not like in person, but like in as a content creator. 
And he was right. Like once I gave him like a chance and started watching him, I was like, oh, I get it. I get what he's doing. And now seeing this, this is the hope I have for Sneeko, for everybody else that I've ever had problems with on the internet. This is what I wish for all of them is to have this moment because how much better would the world be? How much better would they be? Their friends, their family, the women in their lives who talk about them, all the women in their lives could be praising them and loving them. But instead, all they have is complaints. And it's because they're not having these moments. This is the moment I am hoping for, for everybody. Even if it happens once, twice, three times, four times in your life, this moment could happen 7 million times in a person's life. May it happen. But he's popping a bubble. He's having a deep realization about himself. And he's like, oh my God, it's me. And I'm like, yeah, it's always us. And he's like, no, no, no it's me. And I'm like, mm-hmm. And now he's gonna, boom. he's gonna, you know what I mean? It's so excited. Oh, it's so, it's so exciting. And this is just the beginning step. We don't expect Asmin to be different tomorrow, but this is the first, like, this is a big part of the journey. How exciting is this, huh? I, I think I need to do this for myself. I need to take accountability for bad things that I've done. I and like this. That's true. Chat says could be therapeutic for him to do it himself. Honestly, I think that's what he's aiming for. I think I think. As long as he is open to help in the future if he needs it, yeah, I think him cleaning his own place is a very big deal. For letting my life get this out of control. Mm. And I don't need a get out of jail free card. So I need to do that for myself and for my own closure as well. Great. And I think also I want to live for the the, <laughs> the the idiots out there that, you know, they're, uh, you know, like looking to me to be a role model, right? Oh, not a good idea. But um, there are people that will see that and um, they'll think maybe to themselves, maybe I should do the same thing. And if I can do that for one person, um, well, I've already done it for myself. I've already done a good thing. And so it could only get better. And so that's what my plan is. I'm going, I'm going to try to like rethink my life. I have had a lot of people reach out to me, people I would have never expected to reach out to me in ways that I never expected. Mm -hmm. And I understand that, you know, like I, I'm, I'm still very critical about, you know, religious fundamentalism. Right. But when you paint with such a broad brush that you just include an entire group of people, you're not, you're just being a you're being a piece of shit. Mm. It's like people said it was racist. I didn't mean it as racist, but if you listen to what I said, it's easy that you could assume that. Mm. It's so easy. And so I'm I'm just a f I'm a fucking moron. I've been an asshole. I think that I've devolved for the last two years. I think that I've negatively affected other people too in ways that I I, I, I hate I, I don't even hate to say this. Like I, I think I need to say this. I need to say it more. I, I've I've negatively affected people in ways that I regret. I think whenever I go back live again, I'll probably talk about that more and you know, like there's some just different people I kind of want to apologize to and, you know, take accountability for things that I've said and, and done that have negatively affected other people in ways that were unfair and wrong. And um, that's what my plan is. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I want to say that I, I hope that now, after you've heard what I have to say, that a lot of you all can see kind of why I'm saying that I appreciate this. I'm, I really think that this is something I needed. And I hope that this is the next part of the rest of my life. Ugh. And I want you guys to hold me accountable to that. So if I'm being a asshole again, if I'm being mean, if I'm just being callous, acting like a psychopath, just treating people awfully outside of a well raid when they get killed by fire, but really um, laughing at people's misfortune, try to say, man, just chill the fuck out, stop it. What's, just stop. And I'm gonna do my best to listen. I spent two years ignoring it and look where it got me. This is not even the tip of the iceberg of the problems in my life. Oh. And uh, I want to thank everybody for making me aware that that's the case. And hopefully I can avoid the iceberg, right? And so I want to say uh, that's pretty much about all I've got. Uh, I'm sorry for a lot of people I let down, uh, not just with comments like this, but also just with the way I've been doing things in general. I think that you guys deserve a much better version of me than what you've been getting. And I hope that I can live up to that in the future. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't even want to think about it in the future, right? As soon as I get unbanned, we're gonna, I'm, the best apology is better content, change behavior. Mm. And that's what I hope to do. So yeah, anyway, guys, um, I'm just gonna focus on myself for a while, try to improve my own life. And uh, there's a lot of things I, I think, again, I'll probably talk about more whenever I go live again, that are like more kind of, uh, you know, just like kind of in the weeds, like personal stuff. But um, overall, that's the big picture. That's where I'm at. And so uh, anyway, uh, that's about all I've got. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. I'm gonna try to just take this time off to, uh, you know, really kind of fix my shit. So yeah, anyway, guys, that's about it. I'll see you later, bye. Ugh. So good. Let's read the comments. Okay. As a gay man who was born and raised in Iran, you were not entirely wrong. Even though what you said may have been a little extreme, this is exactly why they do what they do under Sharia. It's not just to say gay and trans people, but non-believers, women, Christians. We need to stop sugarcoating these things. Otherwise, people like Hassanabi 
and his fans are going to go more and more crazy over time, you should not have apologized. As a Middle Eastern person, no, as an American-born Middle Eastern <laughs> Assyrian, my parents are the types of Assyrians that immigrated here and just think of the former culture they were raised in as like barbaric. And a big reason for that is because they they did have to deal with persecution. And I think that's your trauma talking. And I also think we have to acknowledge that these things exist globally. And that's why you can't paint a brush as all of the people or the whole country itself, or this is everybody there because it it's never true. It's just never a fact. If we're being absolutely factual, there aren't whole communities of people that are one way. Communities are diverse. Even the worst communities in the world, whatever that means, have some of the best people because that is just the truth of humanity as a, as a entity. We're too diverse. We give birth to too many, too much diversity for us to ever fully be bad or good. And that's why human beings are just beautiful in and of itself. Like as a species, we're quite amazing, you know? Let's see. Um... Yeah, every these comments are just complaining about Hassan. Don't sweat it, man. Your biggest mistake was talking to Hassan. This is so interesting. His audience is so mad at him. I'm assuming this is his audience. It could, it might, it might, might not be, because sometimes the haters come in. But this feels like his audience is pretty mad at him, which I, I this just shows you like why he had to pop that bubble, right? This is a great opportunity for Asmin. I mean, he's rich enough, rich enough and stable enough. This is an opportunity. This really moved me. You know, YouTube apologies usually suck. It's a good thing he didn't bring out a ukulele, you know? But it is one of those things where this was definitely, I think, a very big deal for Asmin as a character. Um, chat says, I think this is what makes this so impactful is that Asmin isn't even 10% even as bad as some other con internet personalities and still feels the need to apologize and work on himself. Just think about Logan Paul's apology. Think about ukulele. Think about... You know, the other apologies you've seen, there have been a, f a few that have been fine, but this one feels the most grounded to me, which is very exciting. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice for his audience to see it, even if they're mad at him now. If he just gets like 2% of the people who regularly watch him to reconsider their life, he has made someone's life better. He's made the world better in that way, you know, and I'm, I'm excited to see it. This was really, really beautiful. This was great. This is great, especially with the conflict being what it is right now, especially with Palestinians um, dealing with what they're dealing with. It's a very big deal to see someone with Asmin's pool influence people to be more compassionate. And again, my oh, I'm always so moved when people take the higher road. I'm always so moved that Palestinians reached out to him and that's what made him go, holy fuck. And that's kind of the dream. The dream is not that the minority allows to, you know, allows themselves to be persecuted, but that the person who's being targeted uses the compassion that they believe in because it's their values to reach out if necessary and if possible, right? I don't want you to do the emotional labor for anybody, but the fact that Asman had a heart change because a Palestinian, Palestinian people, Arabs reached out to him and said, hey, you doing okay? Like, that's a beautiful thing to see because it's exactly, again, I don't want anyone to hear me and say like, oh, I have to do the emotional labor for these racist, whatever white men. No, you don't have to do that. But if you have the spoons and if you are sort of a leader in your community, this is like that opportunity to build that bridge instead of creating more. And that's what Hassan was trying to do ultimately. And that's why he did so good at it is instead of getting upset with Asmin and writing him off, he was giving Asmin an opportunity. He was giving him an olive branch. And Asmin took it. And because of that, a little bit of the internet was healed today. Just a little bit. Or at least we're getting closer to it. This is a big deal. We rarely see an apology from a boy streamer and a boy bubble who tends to be associated with these streamer boys do this. So that's pretty good. I'm excited. I'm glad for that Hassan did what he did. He killed it. Love Asmin for being open-minded and hearing for everybody who came out to talk to him and this is just great. It's great, you know? Oh, good point. Chess says, considering Asmin has declined over the last two-ish years and his mom passed three years ago, I do think he could still be grieving. He's talked about it recently. He he is, he, okay, my partner and I have been discussing this because I, we were like, I wonder what's going on with Asmin. He seems, something seems like something's going on, you know? He seems a little different. And then I heard him talk about his mom recently and I remember thinking to myself, I wonder if he, he said his mom, what did he say? I'm paraphrasing, but he said like, my mom was like, 
the person in my life every day. She was like my constant and she's not here anymore. And I feel like he might still be grieving. Yeah. Like, I think it's a big part of it. And that's a big deal. You got to, you know, there's a lot of support for grieving families and Asmin had to care for his mother. So if you guys don't know Asmin's story, we watched the video the other day about Asmin's life. I really recommend checking it out because he did grow up being a caretaker to his mother as a young person and then as an adult. And then he was there when she died and then he was left alone. He doesn't have siblings. His dad comes and visits, which is good. He's got friends, but Asmin's just alone in the house with his mother's stuff in it, with his stuff in it. Like, his mother's stuff is in that house. Eventually, you know, the grieving process is also moving on. And, um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, healing is difficult, huh? This, imagine the pride and ego he had to put aside to not double down today because he was doubling down on Hassan's stream a bit. This was a, this is a, this is a big deal. Now, the curious thing is how other streamers will react to it. Cause some people are already coming out like YouTubers and they're like, you shouldn't have apologized. This is bullshit. If they're not moved by this apology, they're not ready. They're not ready. Right. Think of like, isn't that kind of amazing how like for some people they're going to watch it and it moves them. And for other people, they're going to watch it. And they're like, no, this is gross. I can't believe Asmin apologized. And look, Asmin has a policy of never apologize, but he always apologizes when he's wrong and he was really wrong. Yeah, chat says I inherited my parents' house after they died and my sister and I definitely struggle with cleaning. We're not Asmins, but I didn't realize we had so much in common. I think humans have so much more in common than we remember. It's hard to remember that because we really think we're suffering alone. If you're going through it, someone's going through it. Chat says I think the Catholic part is what got to me. Hey, as a Catholic myself who grew up pretty strictly Catholic, uh, it is hard. It is, and it is, like, even now, if I have a family dinner with my family, my parents, like, and they always do it, talk about religion too much, I go, okay, you got to stop talking about it or I'm leaving. Because it's very hard to be in a room with people that consistently, every sentence, remind you that they think you're, like, basically wrong. And it, it's exhausting. And so it feels like, hey, you're the one who believes in invisible God. Don't make me, like, don't make me, like come at you with a sassy sentence, you know? So it is, it is one of those things where I, I understand it. It's hard, but I hope we can compromise and live in a world where people get to be religious and people get to be secular, right? Chet says, why do you think people don't believe change in others or minimize it when they, things do change? I see it a lot. I think it's, I think because a lot of people don't change, right? Like lots of people never change. How many times have we watched Gabby, Hannah, and Fusi make apologies? And they haven't changed. Now, to be fair, they're battling pretty intense mental health stuff. But at the same time, they don't change. It's really hard to think people change. Like, I mean, look at Logan Paul. He's changed, but not enough and not for the better. So lots of people change, but lots of people don't change. And they change at the pace that they can change in and not any faster. So it, it is really hard. Like, I'm really lucky that my parents, I've seen a great growth in them as an example. I've seen a great change in my family as a unit, but everyone's growing at their own pace, right? So I think there's something to that where it's just hard to believe people have changed. And that's why actions speak louder than words, truly, right? Uh, chat says your analysis isn't wrong, but this is just your standard public. Don't cancel me, bro. It's disgusting. Um, I disagree. And I'm thinking about banning you for being stupid, not because, you know, it's wrong to be stupid, but because kind of like evil is brought on by stupidity. And if you're not willing to meet people where they are, you are the problem with the world. You have to meet people where they are. Or this is what I mean. Like people won't accept it. You think this is the typical YouTube apology? You think this was the typical YouTube apology? Like you're either being dishonest or you have the memory of a goldfish. This was Logan Paul uh, six years ago after the Japanese forest. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment and I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm simply here to apologize. So what we came across that day in the woods was obviously unplanned and the reactions you saw on tape were raw. They were unfiltered. Uh, none of us knew how to react or how to feel. I should have never posted the video. 
I should have put the cameras down and stopped recording what we were going through. There's a lot of things I should have done differently, but I didn't. And for that, from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry. I want to apologize to the internet. I want to apologize to anyone who's seen the video. I want to apologize to anyone who has been affected or touched by mental illness or depression or suicide. But most importantly, I want to apologize to the victim and his family. For my fans who are defending my actions, please don't. They do not deserve to be defended. Um, the goal with my content is always to entertain, to push the boundaries, to be all inclusive. In the world I live in, I share almost everything I do. The intent is never to be heartless, cruel, or malicious. Uh, like I said, I've made a huge mistake. I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm just here to apologize. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm disappointed in myself. And I promise to be better. I will be better. Thank you. Wow, amazing. So don't fuck with me when you think Asmin's video that we just watched is the run-of-the-mill YouTube apology. Should we bring up the ukulele? Don't make me pull up the ukulele. No, this was good. This, it was good. It was a, it was a real apology, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, slightly better than the Diddy apology. <laughs> the Diddy apology was the worst. The Diddy apology was the, he beat Cassie up and then was like, I was at my rock bottom. And I was like, <laughs> this man beat a woman up, paid for the tape to disappear, and then literally goes, I'm at, I was at my rock bottom. I wasn't good with the Lord. Ma'am? <sighs> okay. Yeah, that was a great apology. So, with that said, great apology. I look forward to the change, and may other streamers follow suit. Because how much better would the world be? And how much better would the space on the internet be? I love a good apology. Ooh, I hope Dr. Kirk Honda reviews it, because he reviews, his, he reviews apologies and then rates them. <gasps> We need to spam his chat. We need to spam his latest video. He doesn't, you just put the, Dr. Kirkonda, just put it in his latest video in the comment section and say, can you please review this Asmund Gold apology? Because like, it would be so fabulous. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. Now, let's move on. We have other things to watch. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool 